Well, good morning, YouTube. It's about 10 a.m. on Wednesday. We're not motivated this morning, but we've got to get set up. Truth is, most times we wait until Thursday to set up, but the weather's looking unfavorable tomorrow. So we figured we might as well just get it done today, and then maybe we can take tomorrow off, but at least we'll have shelter to be under if the weather does get bad. And uh, we're not doing the actual setup in bad weather. So right now we're all just trying to find our motivation to make this happen. And uh, we had some kitty litter spill in the trailer on the way here. So Amanda's cleaning that up right now. Chip is running an airline so we can start running the air compressor to raise and lower the lifts. But the first thing we do is get this awning up. So let's put this camera down and get to it. All right, aerial team, Amanda and I are up on the roof. We got to get all this metal unstrapped, handed down to Chip so we can start hooking it to the truck. And then uh, we'll start throwing fabric. All right, Chip and Katie are putting the final touches on the frame, the skeleton of the whole thing. Amanda and I have the tarp already laid out and attached to the zippers. So all we have to do is throw it over to them. So once they get done with the framework down there, we'll tie these uh, straps. I got carabiners on them, so they hook to the D-rings on the two end corners of the awning. You throw it over, they can then grab the straps, pull everything down into place, and then snap all the straps that are built into the awning to the framework to keep it attached. It looks like Amanda and I got ahead of Chip and Katie this time because we're ready to throw it over, but they still have to put the six legs in place to secure everything. That way we don't apply too much downforce when pulling on it. All right, we've got the awning thrown over. And while Katie and Chip are hooking all the straps around there, Amanda and I are putting this filler panel in. And for those of you that are new, we use this filler panel just because Goliath has got an odd shaped roof. So the top of the awning is actually way above the roof here. So we just put this out here and we tie it back to the solar panels and to the frame. And this just helps keep the sun and the rain we're coming in through the backside, getting our stuff wet, or as the sun moves through the day, getting that line of sun that moves through the tent. We don't need it on the trailer because you see the trailer has a perfectly straight roof. So when the awning attaches to that roof and zips in, there's no gap there. This is just a gap filler. All right, it's about noon. We've got all four lifts out, most of the displays, not quite everything. Chip and Amanda are going up to the loft right now to bring down the stuff that's up there, put it on the big lift, bring it down. Then all the shelves that we use in the display area are all up there as well as the Love Jugs display cap. Then it's time to just start loading shelves. So now I'm gonna get my battery rack set up and get my batteries pulled out, put on display. I still gotta set up the Let's Roll Lounge. Oh, there's a lot to do still. All right, because we can't drill down or stake down, I use these 15 gallon water barrels. We fill them up with water, we strap it to the awning. That gives a little extra weight in case we get some strong winds. Now, if we know we're gonna have strong winds coming over the service area, we'll also tie down to the lifts and everything just to get as much weight down as possible. All right, and then once those barrels are full of water, I put one at the corresponding poles and we use these covers to put on them. Now, these covers are actually just collapsible laundry bags from Walmart. They were, I mean, spent a few years in the bottom, but they were only like five or six bucks each. I looked into having the awning companies or even any kind of sewing person make like nice covers for these barrels so they didn't just look like beat up grubby barrels. And they all wanted a couple hundred dollars each to do them. And like, we've got a lot of them. I was like, I'm not gonna spend thousands of dollars on something to cover a barrel that I use once or twice a year. So uh, yeah, Walmart collapsible laundry bins, that works. But then when you're done, it at least looks like that instead of that. Now I do have to cut a slit in the top of it with a razor knife or a pair of scissors just to get the handle through. And then we tie it to the awning with tie down strap. Gives us that extra weight. All right, 2 p.m. The Let's Roll Lounge is done. We got our auxiliary lift over here. Batteries are done. The girls are getting all the shelves filled. It's like Chip's got most of the service area taken care of. I think we're getting pretty close to being done. And a big semi-truck just pulled up out front. It could be our AMSOIL order. I hope. 
Well, it was indeed our AMSO order. So now that's here. The girls are inventorying and going through it and sorting what needs to be put away and what needs to be put out on display for the moment. And uh, I'm gonna go borrow a truck so we can move this big thing around back. All right, so the Renegade trailer is going back, back here. behind everything. In fact, you can see the nose of Goliath right there. Back here in the shade. It's backed in pretty far because there's another vendor that will go here that's going to back their rig in when they get here, probably tomorrow or something. And we'll just have to have him make sure he moves out on Sunday night, Saturday night, so that we can get this out Sunday morning to reload it. And I realize at this point that some of you may actually be a little bit confused right now. Now, my veteran viewers, you know what's going on. But for the new ones out there that just came along this year, Myrtle Beach Rally, when we're actually in Myrtle's Inlet, by the way, is the only rally that we do not use the trailer as part of the setup. And it's just simply because there isn't enough room here to do so. And it always makes it a pain in the butt. Yeah, our setup is smaller, so you think it'd be easier. But it's really not because we got such a system to doing it all that I'd still rather just have it all in one. And of course the trailer's back here in the back. We can't put an awning on it, obviously. We can't really work out of it, but I can still store stuff in it. So I can run back here and grab materials, grab products, grab tools when I need them. But we put almost everything that we think we're gonna need out there. It's a little bit of a pain in the butt, but it's only for this rally. Spring and fall, we don't use the trailer. All right, with the trailer moved, the girls have got most of that inventory put away. I'm going to move the barrels because I don't expect the girls to move that really heavy stuff. Then we just got to kind of tidy, put away some of our boxes. I got to figure out where we're going to put some of these flags up. Usually we've got flags on the trailer. With the trailer all the way back there under the trees, I don't think that makes any sense. Sometimes we'll take flags and put them up by the street just to, so people kind of know that we're back here because we're kind of set back a little ways. But we're almost done. Almost done. All right, guys, a little after 3.30, and I think we're done enough for today. Then we're going to take tomorrow off, and then uh, Friday we'll do the final touches on what we need to do. But we can do them while we're actually open for business, so closing it up. Alright guys, the King Sushi location that we wanted to go to is closed on Wednesdays. But it turns out the North Myrtle one is closed on Tuesdays and open on Wednesdays. So we're going to take the ride up to North Myrtle. Now that it's getting later in the evening, it feels pretty good to be on the, on the bikes anyways. So we're going to go for a ride. Hi right, guys, we made it up to the King Sushi in North Myrtle Beach. You know, we drove right past the original Benjamins and I almost felt guilty driving past Benjamin and not stopping to say hi to Jimmy. This just wasn't part of the plan. We weren't planning on coming up here, so it is what it is. But we are hoping that at some time this week we will get to see Jimmy before we go home. But you guys know how it is. Once we start working, it's a little bit challenging to try to get out and get all the way up here to North, North Myrtle. This is a boat that Jim built. Yes, I mean, there's other It is better, isn't it? While we were in the restaurant eating our all-you-can-eat sushi, it stormed like a son of a gun out here. We could see the wind blowing at 25, 30 mile an hour, and it just dumped some rain, but only for about 10 or 15 minutes. So now we might have a little bit of a wet ride home. But guys, I think we're going to end this one here. So I want to thank you all for watching, and until the next time I see you, keep those engines running.